Hello everybody, Dan here. Welcome back to Daily Soap Dish. Now, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button down below because we cover a ton of 90 Day Fiance right here on the channel. I have to apologize to you guys because I put out the same video. However, I forgot to press the button on my audio card and so there was no sound. I don't know how I didn't notice that, guys. So if you watch that, my apologies for that video. So we're going to try again and I know the audio is working this time. So... Let's get right into it, guys. Today's video is about Angela and Michael. And some people have been thinking that uh, Michael and Angela have been kicked off of Happily Ever After uh, due to the drama that is ongoing with Angela and Michael. So what exactly happened? I think most of you guys know by now that uh, Angela and Michael have a lot of problems. Angela can be very abusive. And Michael has recently come to the USA. And after a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months of staying together, Michael basically went out for a walk and just disappeared, just vanished. At that moment in time, Angela called the cops and she, you know, on the last video we did about these two, I believe we listened to the police audio call that Angela placed. And on that video, she was shocked. She was puzzled. She didn't know what happened. She thought that something bad happened to Michael after he walked out. And so she wanted the police to uh, get involved. Now, fast forward to a couple of days later, and Michael basically turns himself into the police uh, on his own volition and basically says that he had to run away because he was afraid for his life. And he has been in hiding ever since. And this has created uh, a war of words, well, mainly on Angela's part, who has been putting out these cryptic posts, accusing Michael of basically trying to destroy her, destroy her name, tarnish her good name, uh, and all kinds of other nasty things. And basically she said that karma always comes to get you, which is weird because if that were true, and I'm not saying it is or it isn't, I'm not you know taking a position on that, but if that were true, you have to think that karma has a lot in store for Angela and her behavior over the last couple of years. And so um, I think karma is also coming for Angela. It's, it's a hunch that I have. If it is for Michael, I think it's coming in double or triple dose for Angela as well. So let's get into this piece, guys. There's two parts to this piece. Number one, have Michael and Angela been kicked off the show? Some people are speculating this. Now, this is in the title of the video. I don't think that they've been kicked off, but people think that. And there's a couple of good reasons why they do. And we'll go through them, but I'm just letting you guys know offhand. So you don't think that I'm trying to trick you. I don't think they have been kicked off. But they're not on the show, and they won't be for a while. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Fans are wondering if Angela Deem and Michael Ilasami are still part of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After Season 8 cast after he went missing. Angela and Michael has a relationship, or they have a relationship that's filled with ups and downs due to their age gap and cultural differences. Now, I'm going to say one thing here. Cultural differences, I feel like it's a pretty generic way of describing the situation I'm not sure that it applies to Angela and Michael. I think the issue is not cultural differences so much as it is, as it is an Angela difference or, or an Angela issue. I think the problem is Angela and her abusive, controlling, and oftentimes just overall nasty behavior. I think that's the real problem here. I'm not sure that Michael is going to have a lot of cultural differences to settle in the USA. He's a pretty laid back and chill guy, at least most of the time that we see him on TV. Now, Michael went missing in America, causing Angela to become distressed and worried about what happened. And despite the drama and, uh, in quotations I would put, betrayal, Angela and Michael's future 90 Day uh, Fiance happily ever after this current season remains uncertain. Now, many want Angela and Michael to be removed completely from the show after Michael went missing in the USA. Angela is a 56-year-old grandmother from Hazelhurst, Georgia, who fell in love with the much younger Michael from Nigeria over Facebook. Angela had been married before and had two daughters with three kids of their own, while Michael was a 30-year-old from Lagos, Nigeria, who had flirted with her over Facebook. Now, despite the red flags, Angela flew to Nigeria to meet Michael on 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Day Season 2. Angela and Michael's age gap and cultural differences led to severe ups and downs in their relationship. You know, one of those cultural differences, um, I would say, was the fact that Angela couldn't provide Michael with a child. And that created a lot of tension with Michael. I believe his aunt, if I'm not mistaken, 
uh, who was, I forget her name, but I love that lady, such a strong woman. And she, she, she really stood for no bullshit whatsoever. She told it like it is. And I don't think Angela liked her very much for that reason. But uh, there was pressure for Michael, of course, to have a child of his own. And I think that's one of the big cultural differences between the two of them. However, even if it was an American guy, probably people in the family would want to see a grandkid as well, like the parents or something. So, like I said, I'm not sure if it's a cultural issue as much as it is an Angela issue, in my opinion. So um, she flew to Nigeria. They had all kinds of issues. Now, Angela was unable to give Michael a baby and accused him of having a wandering eye and a va uh, violent temper. I'm not sure if Angela's projecting here because <laughs> now Michael, for the most part, is a pretty chill and laid back kind of guy. Uh, I have no doubt that he can get, you know, violent under the right circumstances. Uh, I think pretty much everyone can. However, most of the time that he got angry on the show was because Angela was always pushing her buttons, basically trying to get a reaction out of him or just acting completely unhinged to the point where he lost the school. And I think in many times, especially I think back to that time with the car where Angela was just came out of nowhere, then even tell Michael she was coming to Nigeria, showed up at his house and started ripping his car apart and acting like an absolute insane lunatic uh, in Nigeria. And I, if the cameras weren't there and weren't rolling and the camera crew wasn't there to protect her, Angela might have gotten herself in a lot of trouble that night uh, with people uh, in, you know, in, in the city. But regardless of that, most of the time, the violence actually came from Angela towards Michael. Uh, and Michael was, at least as far as I remember, usually pretty laid back. But Angela accusing Michael, of course, because she, in her mind, is a saint and she is the victim. And that's just the way it is. Angela, uh, they faced tons of ob obstacles for his K-1 visa. And eventually what happened is they married in January of 2020. And they tried to get a CR-1 visa. Now, in the meantime, Michael betrayed, allegedly, Angela by having an online affair with a younger woman. Still, Angela didn't divorce Michael after they saw therapy on a they fiancé the last resort, uh, which aired uh, a few months ago. It was filmed just a little over a year ago. And, um, you know, during that show or, or around that, the time of the show, I should say, uh, Michael's mom also passed away in early 2023, if I'm not mistaken. And supposedly, from what I've read, that somehow helped Michael and Angela uh, develop a closer bond. Obviously, that wasn't to last based on the latest developments. Now, it made international news when Michael went missing just two months after arriving in the USA. Angela went live on YouTube with her friend. And Night of the Fiancé blogger John Yates on Monday, February 26, 2024. And she said that Michael's been missing since the 23rd. The police are involved. We can't find him. Angela claimed Michael left everything behind, his ID, clothing, and toothbrush. And she said that uh, he's my husband and I love him and I don't know where he's at. As long as he's safe, just call us. Angela said she got the police involved and suspected Michael had planned his disappearance. But just a few hours later, Angela and John returned to YouTube to reveal Michael had been found. Angela yelled, breaking news, I'm in total effing shock right now, but not really, and that's all I can say. John said that Michael was safe. Angela had received a call from the police after the first live stream from the police. Michael had a burner phone that nobody knew about uh, and had pictures of his passport on it. Once Michael's identity was verified, John then used the word Yahoo boy to describe Michael for what he did once the officers located him. Now, Yahoo boy is a term that uh, I believe describes a Nigerian romance scammer. So, um, name after the Yahoo boy. In Nigeria, Yahoo boys are online fraudsters. Their nickname comes from the email service Yahoo, which became popular in Nigeria in uh, the 2000s. And so, that's what a Yahoo boy uh, is. And so, that's what John Yates called Michael. Now, I'm just... I'm just going to say a little something here. Um, I like John Yates. I think he's a valuable part of the 90 Day Fiance and reality TV community. He often gets, uh, gets breaking news stories. And so he's he's a good source to have. And he's very valuable to this community. But he has one fault. And that fault is, is that he becomes friends with some of these cast members who, in my opinion, I believe, use him as a mouthpiece and to provide or spread positive PR for 
said people, in this case, Angela, Deem, but also John has been friends with people like Paul Stale in the past, as well as some others. And when you get close to these cast members, when you become friends, let's say, I'm not sure if they're really friends, if Angela's using John, I'm not exactly sure how that dynamic works, but when you become friends with these people, then you can't really be critical on them. It affects your impartiality. You can no longer be impartial when you cover and you, uh, you know, put out information about these people because they're your friends. You're not going to put negative information out there about them. And that's one of the issues that John has is that he's friends with Angela. And as a result, he takes her side in this feud versus Michael Ilisami. And I don't think this position is echoed by much of the community because we can all see for ourselves Angela and what kind of person she is. And, you know, when, when Michael ran away, he, he said that Angela was violent. Now, John is saying that it's a Yahoo Boys camp. We've heard that word also said about Usman Umar from Nigeria as well. I believe it applies more to Usman than it does to Michael, but you can make the argument that perhaps Michael is doing that. However, I think most of us don't really care because we believe that Michael has done so much already and that he just seems like a well-natured individual. He seems like a good-natured guy. He seems just laid back and like he just wants a better life for himself. He doesn't come across like someone that just wants to screw the system per se. Maybe he does and perhaps he's fooling, he's fooling us. I don't know. But he seems like a guy that worked hard for his green card and he should finally get it because of all the abuse that he has been put through uh, throughout the years. And that abuse, this is the interesting thing. It's all documented because we have video evidence of it. We've all seen with our own very eyes just how much abuse Angela has been able to dish out at Michael Ilisami. We've seen it season after season literally is basically just loaded with Angela being violent, aggressive, abusive, uh, physically, as well as verbally towards Michael. We've seen it basically nonstop. And so that's why when we look at this whole situation, we see it a little bit differently. Uh, however, John is on the side of Angela here. And like I said, I have nothing against John. Uh, he's a very valuable part of the community. And he's really useful because even though he might not be uh, impartial in this uh, situation, he, he's useful because he's able to uh, get information out there. And then it allows us to also dissect and discuss it as well. So you guys don't be harsh on John. Uh, he's just doing what he does and that's okay but here on this channel we're going to be doing what we do and that's to not really you know take angela's side it's not really something that we do here uh, unless she really changes her behavior which is never going to happen all right let's uh let's get back here to uh to this piece he told the police that he was in fear for his life and he didn't want angela to know his location now according to angela she and michael were together in new york just five days ago before his disappearance john stressed that no one was locked up here referring to accusations of Angela having abused Michael. I was worried thinking he was hurt. Angela was inconsolable as she accused Michael of being a lying uh, shit, I believe. That's what it says right there. She said she didn't understand why people thought she was not human when Michael was sneaking behind her back and lying. Angela had supposedly also contacted Michael's family before she reached out to police, but her efforts did not work. And Angela previously posted a now-deleted TikTok where she looked helpless and was pleading with her fans to help find Michael. A post on Angela's IG account in collaboration with John even provided fans with a number they could contact with information about Michael. Angela had offered a $10,000 reward to whoever located Michael. I guess she needs to pay the police $10,000 for locating Michael. Um, I, I love to see Angela walk <laughs> to the police station and hand them over a bag of cash because uh, that's where he was located. Fans had suspected foul play Michael's disappearance at the time, and they suspected he was part of an immigration scam to get U.S. citizenship. Angela suggested she would get immigration involved to deal with Michael if he was scamming her. If Michael is really missing and doesn't contact us, immigration can take over. That's all I can tell you. Angela used the previously mentioned YouTube live stream to declare that while she loved him, she was not going to take Michael back because what he did proved that he didn't give a damn or an F about her. Angela revealed that she had three lawyers and intended to file for divorce from Michael. She also hinted at knowing someone who had helped Michael go missing. Nigerians, people that backed him, 
get him a good lawyer because mine is ten thousand dollars an effing hour she revealed and angela paying ten thousand dollars an hour for a lawyer uh i don't know i, I think she's flexing <laughs> that's ridiculous and if she is paying ten thousand dollars for a lawyer i'd love to be that lawyer because nothing's happened we haven't seen anything and nothing's happened so far and so that lawyer is getting free cash from Angela, but I don't think she can afford $10,000 an hour for a lawyer. Just a hunch there. Michael spoke to fans after he was found, how Michael broke his silence on social media. So basically what happened here is that he uh, contacted uh, IG blogger Kiki and Kibitz, and basically he sent them a short clip where he was talking, uh, you know, about how uh, there's fake accounts out there on IG. I won't replay it for you guys, but I'll just summarize it. Fake accounts there pretending to be him. And he's warning people not to believe those accounts and not to follow them, not to uh, give them the time of day. And that he himself has no uh, official accounts and that when the time is right, he will basically appear and uh, I guess share the facts of the story, at least from his side. Uh, but for now, uh, there's uh, no, supposedly, according to Michael, no official Michael accounts. Now, Michael was in touch with uh, Kiki and Kibitz and shared a video with them. Um, yeah, so, uh, also my, uh, Angela spoiler happily ever after storyline, they reveal several spoilers. So Angela's, uh, introduction on the show doesn't reveal whether Michael came to the U S she was last seen in 90 day diaries when she was preparing to fly to Nigeria and support Michael during his visa interview process. The trailer shows Michael and Angela j heading to the embassy as he uh, says that they have waited three years for the visa interview if that visa is denied it's over angela tells the cameras michael's disappearance not only confirmed that he had been in the u.s since december but they're still having marital problems and uh it's likely that season eight will document michael and angela's relationship after his visa approval and will perhaps confirm his u.s arrival during the tell-all which according to john yates had already been filmed before michael left angela so yeah uh, supposedly and i mentioned this in uh, in other videos but supposedly the happily ever after current season tell all was filmed like three weeks ago, which I think is a little unusual because usually they film it throughout the season because TLC wants to get a feel for, you know, like what storylines are hot, what storylines are not, what the fans are saying. And they generally want to include some of that feedback, at least at the tell all so that Sean Robinson can press, you know, some of the cast members are on some of those issues. And so, I don't know what TLC is doing, but it appears like they're, they're making all kinds of bad moves recently. This seems kind of like amateurish, in my opinion. How can you film the tell-all a few weeks before the show and not know how this whole thing is going to play out, not know what kind of questions the fans are going to have that we want Sean Robinson to ask? I, I guess in a way, perhaps it doesn't matter because Sean, I hate to say it because I like Sean, but lately she doesn't really ask any of the right questions, so... Perhaps it wouldn't matter anyways. Now, this is the interesting thing here, guys. Uh, the synopsis for the first five episodes of Happily Ever After Season 8 on IMDb makes no mention of Angela and Michael. So there's a few theories here. Now, according to Screen Rant here, they're saying maybe their storyline doesn't take up much of Season 8. Uh, and they might appear later in the season. Perhaps it's a short season for Angie and uh, Michael. Um, but there's no real um, official statement about their statements being cut out. Is that a possibility? Has Michael and Angela drama crossed the line with involving the police, Michael running away, and uh, Michael saying that basically he's afraid for his life with Angela? Don't forget that TLC has cut couples before, and I'm thinking of Paul Stale and Karini Martins, when the toxicity got so unbearable that the couple basically became a hazard uh, to the show. Now, I don't know if the, if there's any kind of uh, insurance implications with, you know, people, uh, you, you know, in this situation where they say that they're afraid for their lives, they're afraid someone is going to get harmed and whatnot. I would assume that there has to be, there has to be some kind of legal implications or some kind of insurance implications. I don't know how that works out, but TLC has pulled a plug on Paul and Karini, after their situation got so toxic, they accused each other uh, of all kinds of nasty things. TLC said no more, and people do like Paul and Karini, and so I, is this a possibility? It could be, but I will say that I don't believe that to be the case, simply because 
I'm not even sure that TLC wasn't in on the whole Michael running away. I'm not sure that that storyline isn't a scam yet. I'm not convinced that it's not. I'm not saying it is, but I'm not convinced that TLC somehow isn't involved. But I'll tell you one thing, guys, and that's that TLC absolutely loves the buzz that Michael and Angela are creating for them. And one reason why I don't think that TLC would take them off the show, even if their toxicity was truly, you know, this bad, is because you guys recently... <laughs> you've all been watching these Michael and Angela videos. I know it. The, you know, the, the vloggers that cover this, they know it as well. This is why if you're watching your wet sock, he's pumping out all these videos about Angela and Michael that are getting a lot of views because he knows that you guys love this content. So if you guys hate Angela, if you hate her that bad, stop watching those videos, but you guys don't, you guys still watch those videos and so your wet sock, myself, Mad Z Mads, and you know everybody else that covers the show, we're going to keep making these videos because we know that you guys like them. But the thing is, if we, the vloggers, the YouTubers that know this, if we know this, then rest assured that TLC also knows this. They also know that you guys are addicted. You love the Michael and Angela drama. Even though you hate Angela, they know that you'll still tune in and that's why I don't think that they're going to cut them. I think that TLC views Angela and Michael as their big money makers this season. They view them as their star couple. I have absolutely no doubt about that. And they know, they see all these metrics, these analytics, these view numbers. They can see them. And so they know that this is a couple that people love to hate, which is good for business in TLC's case. So if you guys truly hate Angela and never want to see her again, Never click on any Angela video ever again. That will send a message to us, YouTubers, and to TLC. But I have a sneaky suspicion you guys are not going to do that. Okay, one last part to this video, guys. Angela uh, puts out a cryptic message that might reveal where she stands with uh, Michael now. So uh, she's putting out a cryptic message on social media that hints at a troubled relationship with Michael. Recent Instagram posts show uh, Angela describing Michael as trash. And claiming he can break her down, Angela could be considering deportation as she feels betrayed by Michael who disappeared and cut contact with her. So what did she say? This is what she posted right here. It's so nice when toxic people stop talking to you. It's like the trash took itself out. Then she also said, nobody hates you more than a person that can't break you. So she's saying this about Michael, obviously. And... I feel like Angela does a lot of projecting, you know? So let's let's take the second screenshot here, for example. Nobody hates you more than a person that can't break you. Now, this kind of hints at a very narcissistic and perhaps even evil-spirited, mean-spirited person that loves to manipulate others and break them down emotionally. And when that kind of person can get their way, then... They lose and they absolutely hate that. Do you guys think that Michael is the kind of person that's being described here? Or do you guys think that this description actually describes a person like Angela better? Has Angela not tried to break Michael down over the years and basically turn him into her lapdog? She's tried to take away his uh, social media. Basically, any kind of way of earning money online, she's tried to basically cripple Michael financially mentally she's abused them verbally and physically she's done everything she can to basically turn this man into someone that's crippled emotionally mentally every every which way i've never seen michael really do that so the image that angela is portraying here of michael is one that we just don't see ever on uh when they're together we just see it the other way around we see it from angela to michael now the first screenshot here is interesting because She's saying basically that Michael cut off all contact with her. So they're not in contact whatsoever. So um, what does this mean? Well, Angela seems to be letting her Instagram story repose due to talking. Apart from saying good riddance to Michael for leaving her, she also revealed her state of mind. Angela perhaps thinks that Michael may have expected her to be in a state of distress, thanks to him alleging that she abused him. Michael said he was afraid for his life and the reason behind it was Angela. 
um and um nobody hates you more than a person that can break you so yeah she's maybe trying to let michael know that she's strong and that whatever he does to bring her down is not affecting her um you know yeah so i i think that's what she's doing but of course there is the chance that all of this is just a game and all of this is just uh premeditated pre-planned and uh, this is all just an act uh, i'm not i'm not sure i'm not convinced that this is all true anyways but angela in these messages you can see she's always the victim she's always the one getting hurt and uh she's not never the the bully she's never the aggressor she's never the villain it's always michael she's always the saint and the victim and this is kind of how these messages read like to me which of course is complete baloney but you guys will let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section down below guys so today's video covered a bunch of things now some fans want michael and angela to be banned from the show some fans believe that they have been and also there's uh, rumors and speculations as to why it appears unless things change michael and angela won't be a part of happily ever after for at least a couple of episodes uh, rumored to be five uh, which seems like a long time and we don't know it could be a number of reasons could just be the way that tlc set it up but it's odd considering that you know T uh, michael and angela are the money couple this season it could be that perhaps they're trying to gauge the response and the backlash from basically michael saying that angela wanted to kill him this these are very serious claims they have to be taken seriously just imagine if a woman w would make those claims about a man on the show I think that the situation would be taken very seriously if a woman said I had to leave this man because I was afraid for my life I think that TLC would have to step in and they would have to fix stuff but I feel like there is this perception that somehow Michael can defend himself he can fend for himself and that maybe Angela is not that dangerous I don't know and there's this perception that he can just take it so it's okay which I think is wrong I don't think it's okay I think it's a serious situation Perhaps CLC is taking it seriously is, is, uh, is another theory. And maybe they are editing them out. I don't think they will, but who knows? Situation seems very dire and very serious. However, I still think it's all just a massive PR ho hoax at the end of the day. I guess we'll have to see and find out in just a couple of weeks. Long video, guys. I didn't mean to ramble on that much. My apologies. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. Hit that subscribe button down below for more content right here on the channel. And if I find out any more information about Michael and Angela, of course, you guys know that this is the spot where to come to get that information. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.